Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. For those who are new here, I'm Aidan, a medical student studying in England, and I make videos on studying, productivity, anything in regards to recommended tech that can increase you and boost your general life, any investment tips or perhaps even going to overall productivity efficiency in life. If you haven't watched my previous videos, the first video that I had there, talking about the break that I had from YouTube in general, and about the milestones that I've achieved, the accomplishments that I've had, and the future plan in general, I would recommend you watching that to have a bit more context into what this video is, because this video is more so commemorating the fact that I have reached over 1,000 subscribers, being able to be eligible for the YouTube Partners Programme, as well as a bit more of a personal touch and a casual style of this way, I've asked you guys a Q&A. And a lot of you guys have actually gone back to asking me a lot, a ton of questions. Intend to go over most of the ones that I've been able to see and being able to categorize into three different categories. One of them being more so YouTube, social media or outside of medicine related. One is more academically or medicine related. And the third one is more personal questions. There might be some overlap with between one or two questions. In both of them are one or the other. But this was based on my general categorization as to what felt best. Without further ado, let's start off with the first one. So the first question is, what do you hope to use your YouTube platform for in the next five years? So in the next five years, I would be graduated and be working as a doctor. The general rule is to be able to still continue to record my experiences as a doctor and continue to talk about what's been happening in my life generally. Any of the things that I've, as a, I've taken as a learning point and that I can share with you guys so you can have a bit more of an insight through my own experience. But also, I think the mindset I'm also going with is I've been told to target people who are at the maximum three years younger than you. So it's in that case, that could either be you know, medical students themselves, university students in general, A-level students, or GCC students to some extent. What that means is that as I continue to progress, my audience will just evolve over time and along with that and the topics then would also evolve around them. Yeah, I could have different interests, I could have new interests, or just even keep it the same as what interest I even have now. I think either way, I would still want to, to rec have a record or have a rec uh, archive of all of the experiences that I have and all of the ones that I'm coming through. Either way, I would still like to have an archive or a record of all of the experiences I've had, all of the things that I'm going through as well, and what the next steps are as well. So not only will it be more of a reflection for me, but you guys will also be on a journey if you decide to still stay with me for five years down the line. Okay, so the next question within the realm of YouTube or other social media is, what inspired you to start a YouTube channel? about medicine, productivity, and other topics that you go through. I've kind of already highlighted it in my previous videos as well, but it started off with during the lockdown, when it was peak lockdown season, and no one was allowed to go out or just basically even leave the house because of how severe the pandemic was at that time. However, as a medical student, I was still classified as a key worker. What that meant was that I was still able to go to placements, I was still able to travel wherever it was deemed necessary, while everyone else who wasn't able to was still stuck at home. And when I was going to placements and when I was able to still be able to travel and have that sense of some sort of freedom there, I started to think that, oh, it would be a good idea to, if I can record my experiences, if I'm able to just what document what I've been up to, all of the traveling that I've done, what I've experienced, what I've learned from it. At least anyone listening or anyone watching it back at home would be able to learn something from it or at least have some sort of a way to also be part of it as if they were also there. And that's how the main intention of started off a YouTube channel or just dedicated to medicine bit came to be since I was just exposed to it as a student. Otherwise, that's just then started to grow out from studying because as a medical student, you have to study and that get to the point of where I am, even as a general university student. You have to have studied a lot, you have to have done a lot of exams. So that target audience of me targeting to anyone who's pursuing medicine is wanting to get great grades and desired grades in their exams 
I just wanted to, to get to a top university with that again that's been perspective to what the, they think a top university is I wanted to target to them and hence that inspired into me creating more videos such as for productivity for studying tips any things I learned over the years as a GCSE student as an A-level student and even now as a medical as a medical student so that I can pass them on to others who might not have even heard about those things or knew that those things existed so that perhaps they can then have a look at it themselves and hopefully take advantage of it and be able to get have that integrated into their everyday life and and hopefully hopefully get some rewards out of it i.e they getting the place that they wanted i.e getting the grades that they wanted as well all right so next up is how do you split your time between medicine these accounts and other obligations i'm i'm thinking it when they say these accounts they mean social media accounts so those of you who don't know in terms of accounts i would have a linkedin youtube instagram and twitter uh, and also TikTok as well, yes. Um, mainly because any of these long form videos that I also create, I'm also able to turn them into shorts and be able to produce them as reels, as shorts as well for YouTube and as uh, TikTok lens vertical resolutions. That allows me to still create the same content that I'm creating, but also at the same time, produce multiple avenues of within the same thing that I've already created and I've already produced. That's also part of the reason as to how I'm able to manage all of those at the same time, where I'm still creating the same content and generating different viewpoints, different ways in which I can uh, capitalize on that same time that I've spent. So that one long form content could easily produce at the bare minimum three shorts. And that's equivalent of three weeks worth of shorts then, or three weeks worth of reels, whichever platform that you're watching it on. That then allows me to have a bit more of a relaxation that not only are my long form videos are going, but also these shorts are also happening on a weekly basis. Hence, that allows me to be a bit more content ready if anything, if an emergency does happen and something else needs a bit more of a priority as well. Um, split my time between medicine and other obligations. I would have to say that medicine still takes the top priority, hence why what I've then started to do was batching everything together. What batching everything together meant was I would create videos worth of an entire term. So for example, if a term was three months long, I would make three months worth of videos on a weekly basis, already batched up, recorded and edited during my breaks, whether that be summer, winter, spring, and so on and so forth. What that allowed me to do was that since having that already done and taken care of, having all of those videos scheduled, those are all going, are going to be going on automatically. I don't have to even worry about those or have to actively do anything. Those are already going on. At the, I mean, they're still back on the back of my mind and I'll still be passively checking through them, but they're already done and dusted. So all, all of my brain power, all of my active energy will have to go on to medicine or any other obligations that I research or anything as long as it's medically related and academically related. But yeah, that puts an end to social media or YouTube related questions. Let's now move on to more academic or medical related questions that I've had. So the first one on the list is, what do you want to specialize in? I get this question quite often, i.e. from previous medical students or just anyone more senior as well. I tend to just usually say that oh, I still have lots of time to think about it. I'll have a bit more of a concrete answer. Mainly because I haven't gotten experience in terms of all of the specialties that are out there. Or I haven't gotten my time with in terms of the rotations or anything of that sort. That, so that means that I still have to see what they are like. And that even could be the turning point or the motivational spark for me. That, oh yeah, this is the one that I want to specialise in. So that's something that I'm still waiting for. So I'm... Um, both uh, lacking in experience as well as I uh, need more time to think about it. But either way, from my own general experience and from my work experience or otherwise at the university, uh, I have a strong inkling more towards neurology. Um, as to why, I think it's just fascinating more over the other. But again, as I've mentioned, I haven't had as much clinical experience otherwise uh, in regards to all of the fields yet yeah, on neurology. Because of that, then, uh, all of my experience that I am saying would be more so uh, theoretical-based 
information, a theoretical based experience. Even though I have shared with other doctors or, you know, have seen what they do, that glimpse I would say still isn't enough to fully dedicate the next 45 to 30 years of my life. So yeah, let's see how that goes. The next question is, what's the one thing that you would change about what you have done as a university student? What's the one thing I would change? I would say that I would, uh, the idea of batching videos out, well, would have been really good uh, at the first moments that I was starting off with. Because batching things out does make a lot, things a lot easier and it just saves time overall and just reduces the stress that I have less things to worry about because that those things are already done and taken care of. I think it's more so being m more open to either questions, to communications, either that be with lecturers or anyone. Because you're, you're in a university at the ideal hub of either making more connections, having more longer lasting or evergreen relationships. And to, the first step on, is only reaching out to them and saying hi, how you are, and you know, just having a short chat about the interests or any of the mutual interests that you guys aligned with. More so or not, what happens is that that just creates another viewpoint or another support for you if you ever do need it in that sense. And the worst that could happen is that they just have a fallout or they just don't con contact with you. But uh, if you don't take this first step, that would happen either way anyway. So that's nothing to lose for in that sense. Advice you would give to upcoming students. For this one, I would say that you have to be prepared more for the work life, more for the study life balance and making sure that you have your priorities right. In the sense that, sure, prioritising your own health, prioritising your own well-being is equally important as education, but you have to create your own balance. You have to see where that balance lies. And the first couple of months of university, the first year even to that extent, for some courses or for some degrees, can give you that buffer period of where you are finding yourself, finding your ideal balance and working out. And once you have found that, you just capitalise on that and be able to then just revolve your life around to that sense because that is what your ideal is. That is literally what keeps you going in that sense and that's what keeps you sane. And if you don't prioritise on that, then overall, then everything just gets crumbled down. There's always three S's that university students get associated with. Study, sleep and socialise. And the whole idea is that you can't have all three of them. And you can only have two. So you either socialise or study. Or you study and sleep and not socialise. But I like to, I beg to defer. You can, all, you can easily do all three. And as long as you find the balance, even, yes, I agree as well, it's a lot harder said than done, but that's just what comes with experiment, I think, and making sure you start to experiment early so that you waste as little time as possible. Are you involved with research? And if so, how would you recommend getting into it? Yes, I am involved in research. I have started to get pick up more and more into research I, to make sure that I'm getting more and more punishments through it. You have to, first of all, come to think about why you want to get into research. Do you even want to do research? Is it even necessary for you? For me, more personally, it was because I was always academically intrigued by it. I was intrigued by the academic side of medicine, i.e. research was part of it then. That meant that I knew that I wanted to always get into research straight away. And it was even more so because one of the training programmes called the academic side of them does require you to have some public relations under your belt before you start to apply for it. So in that sense, it was somewhat necessary. And the fact that I wanted to do it, or the fact that I had interest in it, just makes things easier for, in that sense. And that also makes things easier in terms of how you want to get into research. So research is something where you can't really do alone. There are some exceptional circumstances where you can, like writing letters to the editor. But you still need some guidance, you still need some support in that sense. And that support can easily come with lecturers. More importantly, amongst the fields that you are more interested in. Whether you're interested in more cellular biology, let's say, go to your head of physiology. Or any of the lecturers that you prefer, or you have had teaching of. Go to them and ask, oh, I'm interested in research. Are you doing any um, that I can be in part of? 
most likely they will have something going on or they will have PhD students under their belt and they might be saying, oh, I can tie you up with the PhD students and they can help you out with that. Of course, if you haven't done research before, uh, you won't be asked to do much anyways. And most likely you might be credited as a last author or the second last author because authorship is based on how many how much work you have done within that publishment. That shouldn't matter if that's your first one, mainly because of the fact that it's a learning experience. The more you do it, the better you become. The better you become, the more responsibility you have. And henceforth, you'll get higher and higher up in terms of the authorship. And eventually, over the time, if you continue with that, you even can become the first or the second author. But yeah, it's always at the starting point and asking always help. Do you have any advice on tackling difficult or complex medical concepts? It depends because you could argue that there's a difficult medical concept in any field of medicine, be that anatomy, biomedicine, physiology, or even pharmacology. What most of matters is how exactly would you tackle it. But generally speaking, the first steps would be to identifying what the problem is. What exactly is the issue? Or what's the hurdle that you're that's stopping you from actually understanding? the concept to the level that's expected from you. Once you get that concept, whether that be just understanding, whether that be more so the process or the wider viewpoint of understanding why do you even need to know this, that helps because that formulates the question that it needs to be answered. And that's a lot better than just going through avidly in the darkness and seeing, oh, I don't understand anything. Once you have that question, now you have a bit more of a focused viewpoint. Now you're looking for the answer to that question, not just the idea that I don't understand this concept. There's different ways in which you can answer those questions. Part of it is either asking people or your colleagues or anyone in your cohort or even in the senior years that you may think would be more helpful, that have a better understanding of the field than you do. Asking them for support, seeing what that works for them and trying it out for yourself as well. If that works, that's great. If not, then you can always ask with other people, i.e. your lecturers, if preferably the, the person that actually taught you that lecture are within that field. They will be the expert at it, since they're the one you have dedicated part of their life towards that field. So they would be the best judge in terms of explaining the same concept in a different manner, in a newer format what a format that potentially works better for you. And it was comes to the worst, you can even also come to you with other resources. Usually stick to the reading material that is already advised from the university. You don't necessarily need to go outside of the reading material, otherwise you will just delve more into a rabbit hole. So stay focused overall. All right, now moving on to more personal questions. So the first one is, how did you become interested in pursuing a career in medicine? For this one, I would say that I was already interested in the field of science. Science was, generally speaking, something that I wanted to do at school. That, that was exactly what I was interested by. When it came to year nine onwards, when the GCSE subjects became more important, when the choice of the subjects that you do also became more focused based on your interests, I was looking around the different options that I had. And medicine was one of them where I believe that it gave me the most flexibility, both as a medical student and also career-wise after graduating from medical school, mainly because that meant that as a student or even as a doctor, I'm also able to do other things outside of medicine, i.e. innovation, i.e. anything in regards to entrepreneurship or leadership or health policy making that doesn't have to tie in with clinical medicine or theoretical medicine. That even within those fields, there's a lot more optionality, whether I wanted it, as I mentioned, whether I wanted to do clinical, surgical, or even academic. All of those options were available to me, based on the idea that I can easily make up my mind, based on the experiences that I can have from that. So because of that optionality, and because of the freedom of choosing of what I could do, that just made it a bit more appealing in that sense. What are your hobbies or interests outside of medicine? Well, part of it is content creation like this one, making videos and documenting my life. Because even though it started off with taking you guys on a shared experience with me, now it just has become a bit more of a passion project where I do like enjoying making videos just for the sake of content creation. And the byproduct being that it happens to be educational videos where you guys are able to learn from my experience, the mistakes that I made and 
I'm also able to reflect on them. Apart from that, I do like reading, mainly non-fictional books, so uh, that does include things like Atomic Habits or anything in that genre where you're able to have a better understanding or have a better appreciation of the world around you, of any of the skills that I wasn't, let's say, aware of and start implementing them perhaps if they are really that good. I did also start coding uh, during the pandemic and I know a bit of uh, coding in that sense. But again, they all revolve around some sort of productive, uh, productivity manner. Um, mainly because that's just how I am, that's how I like to keep myself busy with. But that's not me denying at the same time where I can just have a downtime chill afternoon. Or even an entire day where I'm just watching TV shows. Or just be have Netflix on the background. Do you have any role models or mentors who have influenced your career path or inspired you in your personal life? One mentor that immediately comes to my mind is one of my uh, senior lecturers who is a huge, huge academic. They have hundreds of research down and publishments down their belt to the point where they have their own lab um, as well. And I am fortunate enough to be able to contact with them and be in constant communication with them uh, in terms of any support that I need or general advice that I need. And they are also able to support me in terms of giving me new options that I wasn't aware of and giving me new, newer pathways to at least think about before I decide on anything. And that just gives me a huge sense of joy in the sense that I am able to have a bit more of an informed decision in how what the course of the next couple of years will look like. And that's, that's just something that I'm really grateful about. But yeah, um, that is the immediate person that comes to my mind. Is there anything you wish you knew before starting medical school? Are embarking on your career in medicine? I believe there isn't much that you could think about because all of those mindsets or thoughts can already be thought can already be discussed within yourself during when you're applying for medicine, mainly because that's has these type of questions are already coming up in the interview stages. Why medicine? Why this university? Could you tell me about this skill? And you get the idea. What this means is that you have some sort of an idea of what to expect when it comes to medicine or medical career in general. But I think you have to be more so mentally prepared that even you, even though you might be reading how long the hours are, how much um, people aren't getting paid in the NHS and things of that sort, you have to still understand that you have, there is still only a certain level of awareness or appreciation and just a general experience that only comes having gone having seen it on a first hand because second hand experiences are reading it through another source it might be informative and might give you a bit of an idea but that's nothing compared to seeing it in the first hand not experiencing yourself but more so seeing it very close by either um, with your friend either someone from your colleague in your cohort. Maybe because that just gives the issues more of a highlight and makes it more of a forefront that it does exist and it does impact life. I think the quote that I'm also trying to say is that when you're reading something or when you're talking about something or when you're just reading it or looking at it from the news, it might not seem much upon face value because what's out of sight becomes out of mind. But once it becomes right there in front of you, it can't stay outside of your mind. What inspires you to continue even when you think you can't? For me personally, a lot of it is down to how much I have to then work or how far I still have to go to get what I have to do. When During those times, what I do th reflect on is the journey that I've made so far. Because even though there are things that are in over the distance, over the horizon that I still have to reach. I have also covered a large majority before starting off. So being more so mindful of the journey I have taken, the journey that I've already gone past, that is also important versus just looking further ahead on the journey that I still have to make. Because I get more so engraved on all of the work that's up ahead all of the things that I still have to do. And that just gets overshadowed easily by all of the work that I've already done. So I always try to think about that. And that's also part of the reason why I'm still continuing to record because it becomes archives of all of the different 
points within my life that I've gone through. Could even be a productivity video that I've made and published. But that time frame that I could always look back on and say, oh yeah, I was doing this, or it was during those times when I uh, published it. It makes me able to think about the journey I've taken and reflect on that and be grateful of the things that I've done so far. And yeah, that's how I, that's my viewpoint. Oh, that's what inspires me to get going. Of course, there are other things, but that's what internally, uh, initially, I go about with him. So yeah, that was a bit more of a personal, casual, and more of a laid back video where I was just mainly answering questions that you guys had uh, and threw out there. I hope you guys found it a bit more useful and you know a bit more about me as a person versus just someone who makes videos and all the content of the videos themselves. Comment down below if you have any questions that I didn't uh, get to see, I didn't get to answer. I'll be still be happy to answer them down in the comments below. But otherwise, if you're looking for more productive videos, I'll see you in that one.